Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Brandon Morvillius. Alongside here with me is cameraman Jordan Redbeard McCoy, live here on the WHS Network here on YouTube.com, here with the 2020 uh, Delaware County Volleyball Tournament Preview Show here this evening, presented by Stoops Automotive Group Buick and GMC Dealership. Uh, we'll take some time here this evening to just kind of get you all adapted to um, the Delaware County Tournament. Obviously, we got that coming up uh, starting tomorrow night right here from Raider Gymnasium. And uh, should be a great showdown. You got Wampahani taking on Yorktown, um, which um, the first round is going to be split up a little bit differently here, which we'll get into uh, throughout the evening here. But um, Wampahani coming off a, a big win last night uh, to already open up the week, uh, already 2-0 and on the week. And he had uh, the big win at Muncie Central on Monday night. Then Tuesday night traveled to Union uh, to defeat the uh, Union Rockets here in, st in straight sets as well. And so... You know, keep trending in the right direction here. Uh, the Raiders now 20 and one on the season, um, perfect conference record, eight and zero. And so, you know, hopefully we can ride the momentum that we've been on. And obviously, the only blemish that we've had to the season so far has been to the Yorktown Tigers, which was about uh, what a month or so ago. Uh, so it's going to be a tough challenge. Uh, there's no question about that. But um, hopefully, Wapahani is up for that challenge, and not only up for it, but then understands that um, just because they're the Yorktown Tigers doesn't mean that automatically it's a given W for them and a, and a loss for Wapahani. I think sometimes we tend to play um, scared, potentially. I, I, I don't know if that would be the right word or not, um, but we just don't play quite like ourselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, uh, Yorktown can definitely have that effect on other opponents, as, as we've seen, which... We'll get into them here. Um, Yorktown, again, they're 16-0 and right now on the season, so obviously they're doing something right as usual, and the head coach Stephanie Bloom has really had them uh, heading in the right direction. So we'll get right into things again. Uh, the Yorktown Tigers, 16-0 and on the year. They swept Wapahani back on uh, September the 1st. So that was pretty much right out about a month ago. Um, it'll be a month tomorrow in which uh, Yorktown beat Wapahani 25-19, 25 12 25 9 and um and then you know when you look at their stats you know because they started out the season there you know, they didn't start like their first four or five games Walpa honey was actually for their very first game of the year and you know so that was a, a, a definitely a challenge right off the bat there for yorktown but a challenge that was accepted by him without any question so Statistically, as a team, uh, 693 kills on a season, 13.3 uh, kills per set. Also, a 239 hitting percentage, uh, with 74 blocks, 1,118 digs, uh, which accumulates to 21.5 digs a set. And then 645 assists with 94 serving aces. So, um, you know, obviously uh, doesn't uh, have a huge effect uh, from behind the service line. Of the serve or with the aces because they only have 94 of them. I think Wapahani has uh, somewhere right around like 185 or so. Uh, which, just so you guys know, we didn't go ahead and go into great detail about your Wapahani Raiders because obviously you know who they are, you know what they're capable of, you've seen them each and every single ball game. This is more for teams that you know we might have already seen, but you want to kind of get adapted to it just a little bit more and a more in depth look. Um, so that's why we didn't go over Wapahani's stats and, and taking more of a closer look at them. Now, Yorktown here, you have Jalen Dunsmore, 170 kills on the season, 37 blocks to go along with 29 digs and one assist. Also, Caitlin Judge right behind her there in the kill category with 162 of them, 31 blocks, also, also 33 digs. Then uh, also Ellie Stinson uh, having a great... Um, Senior season here for herself, 161 kills, 20 aces, 12 blocks, 261 digs, and 13 uh, assists. And then uh, also we have Ava Aikens. Uh, she has uh, 98 kills, 8 blocks, also 39 digs, and 1 assist. And then uh, finally here a couple other young ladies. Gretchen Moore, 51 kills, 30 blocks, 19 digs, 2 assists. Emily Hill with 42 kills. Five aces, 19 blocks, also 175 digs, and 560 assists. And then finally, 
We have uh, Jenny Mori. Uh, she has six kills, 24 aces, 281 digs, and 48 assists. Uh, so again, you know, you look at Yorktown, tough group of young ladies, no question about that. Year in, year out, uh, head coach Stephanie Bloom always has them trending in the right direction. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I know that was something that we had talked about. Well, it was probably actually during that ball game. It just, uh, you know, every single year they seem to, you know, they might lose some girls, but they they're still right there. They continue to like to. It's not even rebuilding. It's more or less reloading. Yeah, reloading and refueling the the engine here. And uh, so a lot of credit there to the Yorktown Tigers, without question. And um, they're going to definitely be a force to reckon with, not only tomorrow night, but uh, throughout the rest of their season, whoever they play. Mm-hmm. And um, hopefully, uh, hopefully the Raiders can get one tomorrow night. Next up here, uh, we'll take a little bit of a breath. I'll tell you what, this mask <laughs> is not very fun to wear, folks. I'll tell you that much right here, right now. Broadcasting with this um, brings a whole new light to things. You need the good old uh, O2 every now and yeah. again uh, to be able to talk as much mm-hmm. as I do. Uh, but next up here, we have the Cowan Blackhawks, which uh, bracket-wise, whoever wins the Wapahani yorktown game will play Cowan uh, on Saturday morning. Mm-hmm. I think that's. I think eleven. Yeah, I think it's eleven, 11 o'clock because they they have staggered the times. Uh, just so you know, the uh, first semifinal game on Saturday will be played at eleven. The second game will play be uh, be played at two o'clock, and then the championship game is I believe supposed to be played at seven. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so it, it's you know again very different, uh, but with the social distancing guidelines mm-hmm. and the mask situation, you know everybody. You know, has to come in different times. They have to clean the place, and um, so much different times than what we're living in. Obviously, thus the mask. <laughs> uh, next up here, though, you have Cowan Blackhawks, 17 and one record on the year. Wapahani hasn't played them yet, mm. um, which I think they play them what uh, here in a couple weeks. I think so. Uh, which, if you remember correctly, last year uh, Wapahani uh, beat them in county, and then had a five-set thriller at mm. Cowan. Uh, then just a couple weeks later. And so, uh, again, that, that uh, should be another great matchup uh, whenever we play Cowan. If we play him, well, obviously we'll play him once, uh, but potentially could possibly even play him uh, twice as well. You look here at uh, Cowan, though, 602 kills on the season, also 10.2 kills per set, uh, 266 hitting percentage, also 45 blocks, 695 digs, 11.8 digs per set, also, 569 assists and 227 serving aces. That is not a typo. I did not miss say that. 227 aces. That is getting it done, especially through 18 games of the season. Um, especially compared to when you know you look at Yorktown, they played 16 games and they only have 94. Uh, you know, so that is by far. Uh, the largest number. Now, again, Walpa Honey's not too far behind that. Um, you know, when you look at their stats. They might be maybe 20, 25, uh, or maybe even 30 uh, aces off, but that's still a, a pretty large margin. And, you know, that could be like three or four games worth of aces. So uh, Cowan definitely puts a, a ton of service pressure on you and uh, makes you uh, make you know kind of uncanter mistakes, and um, and they're able to execute off of that. So again, team-wise, you know that's uh, that's a big thing you really want to look at here. Uh, for any team that plays the Cowan Blackhawks. Now, individually, uh, you know, when you talk about Cowan, you can never go without saying the name of Gracie Conway. Uh, This young lady has continued, continued, continued to carry this team. 280 kills on the season, 40 aces, also 14 blocks, 117 digs, and 5 assists. Also then, J.C. Harrington, uh, just right behind her with 154 kills, having a great season here for herself. Uh, 26 aces, 6 blocks, 105 digs, and 178 assists. And if you remember, you know, they had a kind of a two-headed monster last year and maybe even a three-headed monster um, there with that young lady that uh, that graduated last year. Um, let's see, what was her name? They had DeMarchi. Yes, DeMarchi. I mean, you, you had her and Conway both was leading the charge uh, for that Blackhawk team. Now you come back this year with her graduate, but you still have Conway and then Harrington 
has really fulfilled a big role and has had a great season for herself. So again, 154 kills, 26 aces, 6 blocks, 105 digs, and 178 assists there for Harrington. Next you have Gracie Upchurch, a young lady with 46 kills, 30 aces, 2 blocks, 54 digs, and 2 assists. Next, uh, Emma Clark, um, 39 kills, 67 aces, 3 blocks, also 66 digs, and 330 assists. Next, we have Sophie Smith, 32 kills, 15 aces, 10 blocks, and 23 digs to go along with 2 assists. And then finally here we have Riley Mace with 1 kill, 29 aces, uh, 267 digs, and 49 assist uh, and again you know these are just you know some of the key players you know there might be some players left out and I don't mean any disrespect with that you know but when you look at the broad spectrum of things here who's going to make the biggest impact that's what we go for we make uh, you know we take a look at all the most impactful players with all these teams you know Yorktown Cowan you know, all of them and um, and then give you that information now I will say for some of the other teams we can't get any information on them Westdale Warriors, a, a team that I don't think usually they've, uh, you know, really put many stats online, which we get all of our stats from maxpreps.com. That's where right. we go to get all of our stuff. Uh, they didn't have anything on there. Westdale didn't have anything on there. Delville didn't have anything on there. And Delta only had, I think, they, they've only played nine games. Yeah. I think they only have five of them on there, uh, you know, five games worth of yeah. stats. So everything's not up to date. We didn't really go with it. Uh, but Westdale is 9-12. and 12. They also played a night uh, in a big conference game at uh, Randolph Southern. And so um, I guess we'll find out mm-hmm. more than likely later on some point uh, how they did in that one. But still 9-12. and 12. Mm-hmm. You know, y- you look at uh, when, you know, when we played them back on uh, it was August 27th. Raiders swept them mm-hmm. 25-12, 25-13. 25-17. And I think as the seasons went along here, I think they've continued to improve, get mm-hmm. better, um, adapt to one another, and become more of a collective unit. And that's why, uh, you know, again, as the seasons went on uh, along here, they've started to play even better. And so <laughs> yeah. that's, you know, especially with Coach uh, Biff Wilson mm-hmm. at the helm of things, as usual, that's never a team you can, you know, just chalk up a, a win for, you know, if you're the opponent. Mm-hmm. You've got to go out there and play hard, play aggressive from start to finish in order to beat this Westdale team. Mm-hmm. Uh, same thing with Daleville, five and twelve on the year. Uh, Wapahoney swept Daleville back on the 21st of this month, which was uh, literally last Monday, if I remember correctly. So uh, about ten days or so from now, or um, uh, okay. before. Um, but uh, Wapahoney swept in 25-14, 25-11, 25-5. And then uh, lastly here, the Delta Eagle, uh, Eagles, like I would mentioned, only played nine games. I think they might have had a little bit of um, just an unfortunate run-in with, uh, with some things. But um, nonetheless, the Wapahoney beat them in the first game of the season back on August 18th, uh, swept in 25-22, 25-9, and 25-18. Um, so, again, you know, uh, I know it's unfortunate we can't really get some stats for those teams. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you get to this time of the year, anything's possible. Nothing's a given. And you still got to go out, play, you know, play your best from start Mm -hmm. to finish and go from there. Now, from a high standpoint, uh, you know, we've got to just continue to be confident, be confident in our abilities. And, you know, because I think we've, uh, you know, again, as the seasons went along, has played better. You know, we still have, you know, our moments, but what team doesn't? You know, you're not going to go out there and play perfect volleyball every single night. just ain't going to happen. And majority of nights you won't. Uh, you know, you're still going to have your, you know, mistakes, you know, whether it be communication or, you know, something that just goes on out there on the floor mm-hmm. from a hitting standpoint or passing, you know, whatever the case might be. You're going to make mistakes, but you got to minimize those mistakes, learn from it, get better from it, and, uh, you know, run that out there throughout the entire ball game every night of going out there and dominating your opponent Mm -hmm. um you know and that goes right along with again performing the basic facets of the game correctly Mm -hmm. you know hitting you know keeping a ball in bounds making a defense play uh defensively you know our passing has been shaky at times throughout the year um you know again that just kind of goes with the game itself you know it's not 
always uh, sunshine and daisy, so to speak. And so, uh, you know, when you have moments of, uh, you know, where you're not performing quite the way you're hoping to, you know, in whatever facet of the game it is, you got to just repair it, fix it up. Uh, you know, whatever mistake it is, hopefully, you know, it won't be much of a mistake towards the end of the year. And obviously, now that we're getting towards the end of the year, our passing our passing's getting a lot better. Mm-hmm. And so hopefully that, that trend will continue. I think our serving's been a lot better as well. I think we've been more focused, you know, again, keeping the ball inbounds, keeping it out of the net. Um, too, you know, you haven't seen too many two-hit calls or uh, net violations, you know. So we're doing things that... Uh, you know that we should be doing and to where you're not you know making some of those mistakes to shoot yourself in the foot and then uh, lastly here um, you know we just got to bring the intensity I talk about that all the time you got to bring the intensity and, and uh, the energy throughout all the ball games there's no points off you can't take a point off in this game uh, you, you know from from one point to the other it's got to be pedal to the metal all the way until you know that final point scored to end the ball game uh, you know, then once you do that, then, you know, hopefully you can say that you left it all out there on the floor. Um, but, you know, understand that, believe you can win, and uh, as the motto says for the volleyball team, um, remain all in. And uh, hopefully the the, uh, the Raiders remain all in tomorrow night and from all the other nights uh, continuing after that uh, throughout the rest of the season and um, hopefully have a lot of success. Because we've started off well, got to finish well, and uh, make sure and get, you know, you have a lot of goals throughout the course of a year. Your conference, mm-hmm. county, you know, obviously sectional, and, and building all the way up. But um, really step one or, or, or one goal uh, starts tomorrow night, and uh, the Raiders have to be uh, reared and ready to go because that's going to be a dogfight uh, without question about that. So, again, um, I know it's not a lot. Uh, we tried to get as much information as we could. Mm-hmm. I know Redbeard Hurley didn't say <laughs> hardly anything at all. Um, I'm here for support. Well, and I appreciate the support. Uh, but no better cameraman in the business than uh, Redbeard right here. So greatly appreciate him. But, um, as again, uh, we'll be back on the broadcast tomorrow night for the first time in, I think, seemingly like, what, uh, six or seven years now. When we first started broadcasting, we was able to do the ball games, mm-hmm. and then they, uh, the Delaware County Athletic Association, kind of went a different way with things, mm-hmm. uh, and that's fine. You know, you, they got to do whatever they feels best. But luckily, um, they uh, they decided this year with the pandemic and everything going on, and and you're not allowed to have as many people here, uh, that they're allowing broadcasters to broadcast the county tournament. So we'll be broadcasting tomorrow night. Again, only Wapahani games. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's going to be a real privilege to be able to do that again. And so we'll have it on the on uh, on our YouTube channel again. Make sure to subscribe to that for free, no cost at all. Uh, so make sure to do that. Um, also follow us on our Twitter and Facebook pages at WHS Network uh, to find up to date information about uh, every single ball game or you know whatever the case might be throughout the year. And um, we're really looking forward to a great game tomorrow night. So make sure please join us. Uh, it'll be a Raiders Live uh, pregame uh, right around 5.50 or so. Uh, we'll have uh, some pregame stats and, and information to talk about uh, for the uh, upcoming ball game again between your Wapani Raiders and the Yorktown Tigers. So, again, we appreciate everyone for joining us here tonight. Again, I'm Brandon Morvillius. Alongside right here is cameraman Jordan Redbeard-McCoy. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you tomorrow night right here on the WHS Network.